Hey guys, I am in our classroom today. I got to come into school today because they announced that Mrs. Rock is our Bellevue Teacher of the Year, which is really exciting. And we got to do a little parade of our cars through some of the neighborhoods. So I hope that you got to see us or hear us honk, honking. Um, and if you didn't, maybe we'll do another one uh, on a nice day where it's sunny and warm outside. Um, but I am here so we can start Dingo's at Dinner Time. It's book number 20. Um, and we have Jack and Annie's last gift that they need to free Teddy from the spell, Teddy the dog. So they have already received a gift on a trip to the Titanic, a gift from the Lakota Indians, and a gift from a forest in India. Now they are about to set out in search of their last gift, and that is the title of chapter one, The Last Gift. Annie sat on the porch steps. She stared down the street at the Frog Creek Woods. Hey Jack, she said. Do you hear it? Jack sat next to her. He was reading a book. Hear what? He said. Teddy's calling us. You're kidding, said Jack. But he looked down the street and listened too. A faint bark came in the distance. Arf, arf. A big smile crossed Jack's face. You hear it, Annie said. Yep, said Jack. You're right. Time to go. He stood up and grabbed his backpack. Be back soon, Annie shouted through the screen door. Don't be late for dinner, their dad called. We won't. He and Annie ran down the street and into the Frog Creek Woods. Soon they came to the tallest oak. There was the magic tree house and a little black nose stuck out the window. Hi, silly, Annie called, we're coming. Arf, came a happy bark. Annie grabbed the rope ladder and started climbing. Jack followed her up into the tree house. A small dog sat in a circle of afternoon sunshine. His tail wagged. Hey, Teddy, said Jack. Jack and Annie hugged Teddy and the dog licked both of them. Morgan's note is still here, said Annie. Yep, Jack knew the heart note by heart now. This little dog is under a spell and needs your help. To free him, you must be given four special things. A gift from a ship lost at sea, a gift from the prairie blue, a gift from a forest far away, a gift from a kangaroo. Be wise, be brave, be careful. Morgan. So there's the note there. Beside the note were the gifts from the first three trips. One, a pocket watch from the Titanic. Two, an eagle's feather from the prairie skies. Three, a lotus flower from a forest in India. We just need to get a gift from a kangaroo, said Annie, and Teddy will be free from his spell. We must be going to Australia, said Jack. That's where kangaroos live. Cool, said Annie. Teddy whined and scratched at a book lying in a corner. Jack picked it up. What'd I tell you, he said. He showed the cover to Annie. The title was Adventure in Australia. Great said Annie. She looked at Teddy. Ready to meet a kangaroo? Jack opened the book. He found a page with small pictures of different animals and a big picture of a forest. Jack pointed at the forest. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Hmm, chapter two is called Sleepyhead. Jack opened his eyes. Glaring hot sunlight flooded into the treehouse. Neat hats, said Annie. She and Jack were both wearing hats now. I think they protect us from the sun, said Jack. They looked out the window, and Teddy looked with them. The treehouse had landed in a scrubby forest filled with droopy plants and dry brown trees. Man, this place needs some rain, said Jack. He sat back on his heels and looked at a picture of where they had landed in the Australia book. He read, Australia's forests go through times of drought. A drought is a long period of time without any rain. The same forest can be flooded by heavy rains at other times of the year. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, drought equals no rain. Let's see if there's notes there. And these are probably those hats that they're wearing. Protect their skin from the sun, their faces. Hey Jack, said Annie, doesn't it smell like a cookout? Jack sniffed the air. It did smell like a cookout. So some people say cookout and some people say barbecue. So they can smell like smoke or that kind of smell that you smell when someone's cooking something like on a grill. Jack looked out the window. A wisp of smoke floated above trees in the distance. Maybe people are camping over there, said Jack. Let's go see. Jack put his notebook and the Australia book into his backpack. Put Teddy in there too, said Annie. Jack slipped the little dog into his pack, then followed Annie down the ladder. You can see where they are now. Another forest, just like in India. Lots of wildlife and trees. 
When they fought, stepped down on the ground, the hot wind nearly blew their hats off. The campers must be over there, said Annie. She pointed at the smoke in the blue sky. They started walking across a sun-baked clearing. They passed bushes and scrawny trees. Lizards ran over the dry, cracked ground. Arf! Arf! Teddy barked from Jack's backpack. Whoa, said Teddy. A pair of huge, funny-looking birds walked out from behind a bush. They were taller than Jack. They had fat bodies, long skinny legs, and long skinny necks. Who are you? Annie asked the strange pair. Jack opened his pack and took out a, the Australia book. He found a picture of the birds. They're emus, he said. He read aloud. The emu is a large bird that doesn't fly. It can run as fast as 30 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast, said Annie. Arf! Teddy jumped out of Jack's backpack and barked at the strange birds. The emus gave the little dog a hofty look. Then they turned and walked proudly away. Jack wrote in his notebook, emus, proud birds, don't fly. There's a note here. Look, a live teddy bear, said Annie. Jack looked up. Annie ran to a tree at the edge of the clearing. The live teddy bear was nestled on the fork of the tree. Oh, it's so cute, said Annie. The creature was fast asleep. He had large round ears, a black nose, and a furry body. His feet had long curved claws. It's a koala bear, said Jack. Hi, sleepyhead, Annie said to the koala. She patted his soft fur. He opened his big eyes and looked calmly at her. Jack found a koala picture in the Australia book. He read, the koala is actually not a bear at all. It's a marsupial, like a kangaroo. A marsupial mother carries her babies in a stomach pouch. That's neat, said Annie. Jack kept reading. Koalas eat mostly the leaves of gum trees, so cutting down gum trees to clear land has hurt them. Wildflowers are also a threat. Koalas are slow moving and can't escape the smoke and flames. Jack pulled out his notebook and wrote, wildfires are a threat to koalas. What's wrong, sleepyhead? Annie asked the koala. Don't you feel well? Don't worry, said Jack, listen to this. He read more from the book. Koalas, like kangaroos, are active at night and sleep during the day, when the sun is hot. The name koala means no drink because koalas rarely drink water. They get moisture from the leaves they eat. Hmm, that's kind of an interesting fact about koalas. And you can see here in the book, these are parts where Jack's reading from the book and then these are his notes. You can see his handwriting. <clears throat> Jack licked his lips. His mouth felt dry. Speaking of water, he said, I'm thirsty. Me too, said Annie. Teddy was panting as if he was also thirsty. Well, let's find those campers, said Jack. Maybe they can give us some water. Jack put Teddy into his pack. He tucked the book under his arm in case he needed to look something up. They began walking again. Suddenly, there was a loud, harsh cackle. Yikes, said Annie. What was that, said Jack. Hmm, that's the end of chapter two. And chapter three is called Bigfoot. I wonder what that's about. So they hear a loud cackle, and now it's kind of a mystery as to what that is but we'll find out tomorrow in chapters three and four so that was the first two chapters of dingoes at Dim dinner time this is our 20th book which is pretty exciting so let me know what you think and what you think is going to happen next what is that loud harsh cackle that they're hearing and i'll read more tomorrow i'll see you guys later bye